ladies and gentlemen, up next, the Holy Land. Please welcome former special assistant to the U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Milstein, and host, Biana Schlapp. Thank you so much for coming. I don't know about you all, but I think one of the best parts of CPAC is we get to see just how big and vibrant the conservative movement is. And not just here in America, but across the globe. CPAC has been partnering with different organizations and doing international CPACs. Um, this summer, we had the privilege of going to the Holy Land, which is what we're going to talk about tonight, today. So David, um, what does it mean that CPAC went to the Holy Land? Well, first of all, it's great to be here and to be back at CPAC. Uh, it was very, very special uh, that CPAC decided to prioritize uh, going to Israel. Israel is one of America's best friends and closest allies in the entire world. And it was an incredible delegation. We went all over the land of Israel. We went up to the Golan Heights and saw Israel's security challenges to its north. We went into Judea and Samaria to see Israel's biblical heartland. We went into Jerusalem and saw the Western Wall, thousands of years of history, uh, also even the, the city of David where uh, King David actually established Jerusalem as the capital of, uh, of the Israelite kingdom going back 3,500 years ago. It was a very, very special trip, but it also goes to show that an organization, CPAC, that is such uh, an important part of the conservative movement showing the world that the conservative movement and the Republican par Party strongly stands by Israel. Uh, and so to lead such a high-level delegation, especially at a time when much of the international community and we've seen some hostility from the Biden administration uh, towards Israel, it's very, very problematic. So for an important organization like CPAC to go to Israel means a tremendous amount. Yes, so you mentioned um, the CPAC delegation. This delegation consisted of three U.S. ambassadors who were all um, greatly helpful in facilitating peace in the Middle East through the Abraham Accords. So David, I was hoping you could tell us, where do the Abraham Accords stand today? It's a great question. So very briefly, the, the, the Abraham Accords came to happen because of two main factors. One, it was Prime Minister Netanyahu back in 2015. He came to Congress and sp spoke out so courageously against an, uh, an Iran deal that even if Iran followed the deal, it would have paved Iran's path to an arsenal of nuclear weapons. And you combine that with the entrance of the Trump administration that put aside the failed and misguided false premises of how the U.S. should approach the Middle East in the past and recognize the importance of standing with Israel, but not just standing with Israel, making historic decisions in support of Israel, like recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, like moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, like recognizing Israel's sovereignty over the Golan Heights, like saying uh, that Jewish communities in Judea and Samaria are uh, part of the land of Israel and not illegal. All these historic decisions, much of the foreign policy establishment falsely thought that it would actually create more violence in the Middle East. And instead, it actually showed that when America stands unequivocally with Israel, when we also, by the way, leave the Iran deal uh, and put maximum sanctions pressure on the, on the Iranian regime, and oh, by the way, knock out Qassam Soleimani, the number one terrorist in the entire world, which President Trump had the courage to order, you do all those things, you actually are able to bring the Gulf Arab states and Israel together. Uh, and also you remove what has been uh, a canard in the foreign policy establishment that somehow you need to make or facilitate peace between Israel and the Palestinians first before you try to have a wider, a wider peace agreement. And, and that's not the case. Uh, the central cause for violence in the Middle East is not the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. It's actually the regime in Tehran that is the number one state sponsor of terrorism in the world. So fast forward to the Abraham Accords. The Trump administration was able to facilitate peace between Israel uh, and the UAE and Bahrain and Morocco and even Sudan. And we've seen these things grow, not because of the Biden administration, but in many respects, despite the Biden administration. And we've seen that in the last two months. Israel and Sudan has more fi finalized their peace agreement. It's an incredibly big deal that Sudan itself was able to tr turn the page in its approach to Israel because it was uh, back in 1967, right after the Six-Day War, 
the Arab League met in Khartoum, which is the capital of Sudan, and declared that there would be no recognition, no peace, and no negotiations with Israel. And now you've seen that completely change. You've seen a country that was, that was helping the Iranians and Hamas and all these other terrorist organizations push that all aside, and now they've made genuine peace with Israel. You've seen Saudi Arabia, while not yet part of the Abraham Accords, allow flights uh, over its airspace, Israeli uh, airlines to fly over its airspace, which is a really, really big deal. Um, and you've also seen, uh, actually just a few weeks ago, uh, Oman, which still also, like Saudi Arabia, doesn't have formal ties to Israel, also allow Israeli flights to fly over its airspace. Um, and all this is happening and growing, particularly also at, at the commercial level, because you're seeing billions and billions of dollars in investment between Israel and these Gulf Arab states. And it's, it's a warm piece. It's coming from the bottom up. And so that shows that these things are going to continue to last. Uh, and, and it's a very special thing to watch and be a part of. And one last question. Yes. Um, why is it important that America keep Israel as a strategic ally? Absolutely. So very quickly, we have roughly 50 seconds left. Um, unfortunately, we've seen calls in the Democrat Party, particularly the squad, uh, who slander Israel, mm. who, who call for conditioning or eliminating military assistance to Israel. And just very quickly, I want to say that really America has no better friend in the world, in my view, than Israel. That military assistance that we provide Israel, which is $3.8 billion a year, is a drop in the bucket to the uh, return on investment that we, that we receive from Israel, the intelligence cooperation, the technology sharing. The fact is that Israel simply asks for the military assistance and the capabilities it needs to defend itself by itself. But when it shares our values and when it shares our enemies, they're basically an outpost for America and one of the most dangerous regions in the world. So it's more important than ever that all of us come together to strongly support Israel because supporting Israel is in our America's national security interest as well. Thank you, David. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.